Welcome back, everyone. My name is Brian, and we're going to continue our journey into Python with multiprocesses. We're going to look at starting and stopping. In short, we're looking at the full process life cycle. Here's an example of what we're going to be doing. We're going to start the application. We're going to start a worker, and then we're going to finish and get the end result back from that worker process. When I say end result, we're talking about the exit code from that process. Let's take a look. First things first, before we can do any work, we have to do our import. So we're going to import logging. We're also going to import multiprocessing. And then we're going to say from multiprocessing.context. Now, when we talk about context, we're talking about the context of execution. Specifically, we're talking about a process. So when you think about context of execution, really you're talking about scope. Every process has its own scope. It's actually pretty cool how that works. So we're gonna go ahead and import time so that we can stop time when we need to, to make it look like the program's actually doing a lot of number crunching. We are gonna do more complex examples in the future, but we just want to simulate work at this point. So let's go ahead and define the function that our worker processes are going to use. And in this example, we're only gonna use one process, but it can be used over and over again for a number of processes. So I'm gonna say def, let's go ahead and call this work, and let's say msg for message and max. So really we're just going to count something out and spit out a message. So let's go ahead and get the name of this. I'm gonna say multiprocessing current process, and we want the name. From there, I'm going to say logging.info. And yes, assume at this point that logging is actually configured correctly and everything's it just expected to work. We're going to cover it in a later section here. But just for grins and giggles, let's just assume that it's already set up. I'm going to say started. And then I'm going to say for x in range. And this is where we're going to just simulate some work here. We want this to go up to the max. Now let's go ahead and say logging.info. And let's just print out the name of the message here. Now we need to simulate like we're doing some sort of real heavy number crunching or just something. So I'm gonna say, let's go ahead and sleep for one second. Clearly, this is not going to win any Nobel Prizes for complexity or anything like that. But basically, all we're doing here is we're jumping in. We're saying, hey, get the name and then print out some information on the screen and then go to sleep every second and continue printing out over and over again. Just going to simulate some work. Now that we've defined the function that our worker process is going to use, let's go ahead and work with our main process. Now, notice I called this the main process, not the main function even though it's identical. So the main function runs in the main process. Let's say main, and let's call the main function, which we have yet to build. Now, before we do any of that, we are going to set up logging. We wanna make sure that all this stuff works across multiple processes. Remember the way Python interprets this is it's going to go in and it's going to configure logging based on the config, but it's only gonna do it one time. And some of the different versions may do this a little differently. So I put the login config before I've even called main. So we're just going to make sure that's called no matter what. Now, realistically, it should be configured here, but on older versions of Python, that's just has been no luck for me. So we're just going to play it safe because I don't know what version you're going to be running. All right. Once we're here, we can go ahead and say logging.info. And let's just simply say started. Now we want to actually kick up a worker process. So let's go ahead and call this worker equal, and I want to create an instance of the process class. We're gonna say target, and this is going to be our work function. We wanna give it some arguments. Let's say args equal, got a handed a list, and let's just say working, and then we need to give it a number here. So. Let's just take a step back. I'm gonna make a variable called max. 
And we're going to put it right here, max equals two. And this is going to be critically important to this little demo application. So really all we're doing here is we're calling this process with this function with these parameters here. Now max is going to do this range and that's going to be the number of seconds we're going to go to sleep. So this right here would say sleep for two seconds. That's going to be critical by the way this is going to function. Almost done. We're going to say we want to be a daemon. And let's go ahead and set this to true. Now, we didn't do this in the last video. Let me move my mouse so you can see. But we're going to actually set the name of this process. That's right. You can actually name them. Let's call this worker. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. It's just a string. Go ahead and start our worker. Maybe if I can actually spell it. There we go. From here, what we're going to do is say time.sleep. And this is our main process. We're putting this to sleep. And we don't do this very often, if at all, in the real world because you don't want to hang your program up. But we're going to say main process, go to sleep for five seconds. There's a better way of doing this, which we're going to cover in the next video. But for now, that's what we're going to do. Now we're going to say if the process is running, Stop it. This is a bit dangerous with processes, so you gotta be a little careful. So we're gonna say if worker dot is alive, and this is gonna be a bool. We're gonna say worker dot terminate. And then we wanna say worker dot join. And we're just gonna join that back into the main process execution. Seems a little confusing here. So really what we're doing here is we're saying, make a worker, put it to sleep for two seconds. We are gonna go to sleep for five seconds. When we wake back up, if that worker is still running, still alive and kicking a memory, we're gonna terminate it. And that's a very dangerous thing. It's gonna send what's called a SIG term or a signal for termination, which is going to tell that process, we are shutting you down and there's absolutely nothing you can do about that. Now think about that. Have you ever been like typing a note or an email or something and then the program crashes and you lose all your work? That's exactly what we're doing to that process. That is pretty dangerous. So we want to be a little careful on when, how, and why we do that. So from there, we're going to say worker. Let's go ahead and join all that back into this main process and then we're good to go. And then let's just simply say logging.info. I want to format that out. I'm going to say finished. And we want to get the result or the exit code back from that worker. Now, this is different than returning a value. This is the actual process exit code. And what we mean by this is if an exit code is zero, and I'm going to actually put this here, zero, maybe, there we go. Exit code equals zero is good. If the exit code is not zero, it's very bad. And those exit codes could be operating spe system specific. They could be something that you as the developer would actually determine. But basically anything other than a zero for an exit code means something bad happened. All right, let's go ahead and let's get some screen real estate here. And assuming I didn't mistype anything, all right, started, worker started, worker working, worker working, and then finished, exit code of zero. So it did work as expected. Now it worked because of our timing. We're saying create a process, go for two seconds, sleep for five. So we have three extra seconds. That's why there was that little delay down here. Let's see that in action again. You'll see started, working, working, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, and should finish right about now. There it goes. That's why that works. Now, watch what happens if I set this to 6. Or actually, let's just play it safe and set it to 10. So we're going to say start a process and run 10 times, but the main thread is only going to sleep for 5 seconds. When we wake up, we're going to say if that worker is alive, terminate that worker. We're going to send that sig term that very bad thing and we're going to tell it to shut down and you're going to see we are not going to have a zero for an exit code it will be probably a 15 would be my guess 
see this in action. So after five, it should wake up and then, yep, finished negative 15. So that is the sig term or the termination signal that we have sent to the process. So what happened in memory? This process was happily churning along and doing its thing. And then it died a slow, horrible death, or actually a very quick death. Let's go ahead and say logging dot info. And let's go ahead and say, actually, I'm just going to copy this whole thing. Just for a little bit of clarity there, we want to see when this process starts and when this process finishes. And we're going to rerun these examples. So let's go ahead and set this back to two. Clear this out. So you can see our worker finished. And then after a few seconds delay, our main process finished with the exit code zero. So basically that's what join is doing is it's saying, hey, merge all that memory back together in the background, make sure we know what we're doing. Python gets all the information it needs and we can grab that exit code. Now, this is the fun bit. Let's go ahead and set this to 20. Doesn't really matter. As long as it's longer than our five, it's really not gonna matter. Let's go ahead, run, and let's see this in action. Uh-oh, you notice the problem? Worker working, the worker never finished appropriately. That's why we have this negative 15, which indicates the exit code is greater or less than zero, or I should say not equal to zero. That means something very bad happened. So as this process was running, it could have been on this line, it could have been on this line, it doesn't matter. The operating system came in and killed it and we lost whatever we were working on. So if we were building like a file or a socket connection or something like that, it just completely got obliterated. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.